They make the greatest water ever. I hope you all know that. What's up, y'all? It's the Baltimore Angler today. We're going to be doing something a little different. Um, I'm going to be talking to some of you all about fishing. Fishing for beginners. There's a lot of good videos out on YouTube um, about a lot of good information for getting started. Me, I'm going to be going over all the basics, all right? We're going to be going from equipment to setting up your equipment and getting you to ready to go fish, all right? First thing we're going to talk about is what you need. First things first, um, before you do any type of fishing, make sure that you have a fishing license, all right? And fishing laws vary from state to state. There are also different types of, um, of fishing licenses for specific types of fishing. Some states you have just one basic fishing license. Um, other states, like Maryland, you have probably like eight, nine million different types of fishing licenses. Do your research based on your state and get your license accordingly. Make sure you have your license, make sure that you do your research and that you know everything about the fishing laws in your local area before you start fishing, all right? Also, if you're like me, you bounce around different states. I bounce around from Maryland to DC, Sometimes I go into Virginia as well. Make sure that you have a proper license for the proper state if you do interstate fishing, all right? It's my fishing license right here, all right? Maryland, you're required to have, well, because of the type of fishing I do, I bounce around between tidal areas and non-tidal areas. So I have a tidal fishing license and a non-tidal fishing license. And I think Maryland, both of those together cost about $35, all right? Talking about starting out fishing, you know, fishing for beginners, I'm gonna tell you what you should not do. If you're going to start fishing, in my personal opinion, stay away from the places like Cabela's uh, and Bass Pro. Nothing wrong with those places, but if you're beginning fishing, you may not know what you want. You may not know what fits for you. And with places like that, they have a lot of gear. That's a, It's an outdoor store pretty much the size of Walmart where you have many different selections. And if you go to a place like that, you're going to be overwhelmed. You know, you're going to have... You're going to be overwhelmed by the many different types of selections. Um, might even be overwhelmed by some of the prices because they have a lot of uh, pricey uh, equipment. So starting out, I like to tell people, go to your basic tackle shop. Um, Walmart's is not bad because it, they have decent prices um, and it, it's really confined to what you can select. And it's a lot of stuff for beginners, all right? Uh, Dick's uh, Sporting Goods is, is also not bad, you know, I'm sure in other areas there you have maybe some different stores uh, that sells fishing equipment. Alright, so now we have our fishing license. Uh, we know where we're going to go to get our gear. Now let's talk about our gear and we're also going to talk about our setup as well, alright? Most important tool that you're going to need is obviously a rod and reel, all right? And I'm going to show you a good, affordable selection. Uh, I, I like this setup because I have personally seen it, seen this rod and reel combo handle very large fish, fish much larger than what it was designed to hold up to, but it, it does work. All right, so starting out fishing, I prefer something of a medium action. And I like medium action because it is the most versatile. 
they, you could go after small little bluegills, perch, uh, any kind of panfish. Um, you could also use it for working lures. And I have personally seen this specific ugly stick handle a 30 pound blue catfish. Uh, handled it with ease. So starting out, if you were looking for a rod and reel, I wouldn't recommend going with a rod and then finding a reel. It's almost an art, a science to uh, put a uh, the pair of rod and reel. I would just go and get what's called a combo set. And a combo set is a uh, rod and reel that's already paired. Um, this particular pole I have right here is a six foot medium action Shakespeare Ugly Stick GX2. And again, I like this pole because I have personally seen this pole handle some monster fish. Um, you know, everybody has their opinions, those who fish, and there's, you know, people who like it, there's people who don't prefer an ugly stick, but me, starting out, you can't go wrong with ugly stick. All right? If you're looking for the action, look on the inside of the rod, right there, you could see you have, I believe that is a serial number. I'm sorry, it's a six foot six medium action rod. And because you have a reel on there, it already tells you what pound test line that you have, that is recommended for the reel. And it is a, it is six to 15 pound test. All right, and I actually have 10 pound test because now we're going to talk about spooling the reel, putting line on your reel. All right. So what we're going to be talking about first is the line. If you look at your reel, it'll tell you the gear ratio as well as the, the uh, test of line that you should put on your reel and the amount of yards for each pound test. Now this reel, we have between six pounds, eight pounds, and 10 pounds. We're going to be looking at this 10 pounds 10 pound test at 175 yards. That's gonna be the line we're gonna be putting on here. All right? All right, so before we go on to the, uh, the lining the spool, putting the line on your reel, um, back in my day, you know, information was, wasn't as readily available. And so um, when I decided to start fishing on my own because uh, my mom had introduced me to fishing but my dad was the one who really kind of taught me um, when I decided to go solo I decided to buy a pole on my own you know I didn't get a a combo set I got an actual uh, reel separately and a rod separately um, this was my first ever rod and reel set that I had bought and if you look at it you could really see the inexperience that I had when I first purchased it as you could see I have a spinning reel and I have the rod. However, you see that trigger right there? This is for bait casting rods. Um, the uh, push rod where you push the button, cast it out. I have a spinning reel on a bait casting rod. Um, you know, looks silly. It showed my inexperience at the time. Also, this pole. I'm missing an eye. Things been missing for I don't know how long. Um, it I can't even I can't remember how it came off. Not only that, but the tip is broke. And truth be told, the tip actually broke twice. It broke once, way back when, uh, and it broke a second time. Uh, I think I may have paid twenty dollars for this set at Walmart. Um, it is also an ugly stick. It is a one piece. The pole, the brand new pole that I just showed you all, is a two a two piece. And this one is a one piece. All my inexperiences in this pole, but you know what? I've caught hundreds on top of hundreds of fish with it. You don't have to have everything perfect starting out fishing. You know, um, you don't have to have all the experience. You're gonna mess up. Uh, you're gonna have some stupid things happen. 
but that's all about your experience, you know. Um, it takes mistakes to learn how to better your craft, all right? And I'll be honest with you, this very rod and reel setup I have right here, I still fish with it because you know what? It, it might not be the it might not be the natural way to set this type of setup up, but it works. You know, I, I catch I still catch fish with it. This is the oldest pole in my fleet, and it still works just fine. So I have no problem uh, taking it out. I get looks all the time. Uh, you know, you have a uh, spinning reel on a bait casting rod. I know. You know your tips broke, you know you're missing some eyes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know what? It works. And I'm catching fish with it, so you must be doing something right. All right? So now, we're going to get down to the specifics. We're going to talk about lining a reel with fishing line. All right? All right. So fishing line it's one of the things you don't want to really just buy cheap you want to invest decent money in decent line because what good is the rest of your equipment if you're going to get line and just keep snapping fish after fish after fish after fish it's just not worth it starting out I like to use trilene big game uh, monofilament line and this is 10 pound test and there's 1500 yards on here so plenty of line all right so what you'll first notice you got a little sticker there that actually keeps your line in place the end of it if you can hold on to it or sometimes I like to put it in a ziploc bag so I don't have line going everywhere you know what I mean all right so spooling the line first thing we got to do is tie two overhand knots and this is how we start the um, the spooling of your line all right so what you're going to do is pull out some line like this right there going to take the end of the line and you're going to tie one overhand knot just like this and you want it at the end of your line tighten it down and there you go just like that. If you had trouble seeing that, it should be a little bit easier. I want to say this is the fishing line right here. All right. Take overhand knot. This is out of play. This is actually a stringer, but this this is out of play. All right. So you're going to take your line, make an open overhand knot, come back through, and you want it to go all the way to the end of your line. Very first step in spooling your line. All right. Again, simulate that this is the end of the fishing line. We have our overhand loop, overhand knot. What I like to do on this part, take my line, the end of the line, I'm going to go through the loop once, and I'm going to go through the loop a second time, just like that. Over the loop a second time, I'm going to go with this, this first loop right here, closest to the end of my line, and I'm going to take that line and go right back out through this loop. Just like that. See that? And what's going to happen? You now have a loop, and as you pull that line, it's going to tighten down. Now, I mean, it's not perfect with this rope because it's not as thin and fine as the fishing line, but in the end, you're going to have a loop, and that loop can tighten. <laughs> it's kind of hard with this, uh, doing this with the. Um, um, it's kind of hard doing this with the uh, stringer. But basically, you pull your line, it's going to get smaller. It's going to get smaller and smaller, and it's going to tighten around the reel. All right? So now that we have this loop, we're going to take our fishing pole. All right? Most important step, make sure your bell is open. All right? It's not going to do you good if it's closed because what's going to happen, your reel's going to reel, and it's just going to keep spinning around the line while it just sits there because it's not actually reeling around the line. <laughs> all right and then you'll have to then you'll have to uh, cut your line and if you don't have enough line on there you're probably gonna have to start over all right so now open the bell all right 
Don't leave it like that. Don't leave it closed. Open the bell. All right. So now we're going to take our loop. Oh, it's so hard when you have bigger hands. Oh. All right. So now we're going to take our loop, put it around the reel, tighten it down just like that. Now we're on there. All right. It tightens down to the it tightens down to the first overhand knot. The two overhand knots meet. Now you can close your line. Just like that. Now what I like to do, I like to hold my line around the first eye so it stays straight. And just start reeling. Make sure too that your drag is tight so it'll actually reel and not just spin around on the on the reel. Alright, and as you can see, we're now starting to get line on our reel. Now me, I like to use braid. Uh, there's four types of line. You have braid, monofilament, uh, fluorocarbon, and there's hybrid. Fluorocarbon and hybrid, um, if you're a cat fisherman, I wouldn't recommend that line because it's, uh, it's, a, it's more on the pricier side and they really don't make it that heavy. All right, I use 50 pound braid on all my catfishing poles. Uh, you're not gonna find 50 pound fluorocarbon or hybrid line. Um, mono, the good things about mono is um, it normally is the cheapest. Um, it is a uh, stretchy, it stretches. So I mean, it, it, it gives a lot more if you have a bigger fish. And, and, and again, it is it is cheap. The downside, um, the heavier test line of mono you use, the thicker it is, which means the less that you're gonna be able to put on your spool. Um, also, with mono that I don't like is uh, a term called memory. Memory is, um, as you cast out, you'll have these, uh, your line will curl, and it'll still be kind of in the curls of what it was on the, um, the spool of line that you got it from. And so a lot of times I can mess up your casting. Uh, again, I don't like it, and that's why I use braid. Braid, braid is a lot thinner at heavier uh, test, so you could put a lot more of it on a spool. Um, it's very perfect for uh, fishing heavy vegetation, like if you're going after bass, snakeheads, um, stuff like that. And you have like vegetation, thick leaves, uh, lily pads. Braid will saw right through that stuff. It'll cut right through, and it'll be a lot easier to retrieve. The downside to braid is uh, you really have to pay attention to the end of your line because if you get the smallest little fray, you're going to lose everything. It's going to rip, and often you have to cut off the frays, retie everything. I mean. When it comes down to it, it's what you do.